Uh, please let me know once the screen is up, the slides are up, and I can start from there. Uh, uh, yes, we're now do, looking do at screen on the OCI with a cool sports car. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. On behalf of uh, the MySQL as a service team, I would like to welcome you today. Thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Gagan. I'm the development manager for the team responsible for various modules on the MySQL database service on Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. I'm looking forward to talk with you today about implementing a database service on OCI and using the MySQL database service as a reference, uh, uh, as, as an example to get into the details of how these kind of services can be hosted on OCI. Uh, the safe hour statement, yes, I would like to remind that this is for information purpose only, and the content may change and the sole discretion is with Oracle. Now, over a period of um, past couple of decades, uh, there is a lot of traction for cloud computing. Uh, a lot of people would want to migrate their on-premise uh, systems to cloud uh, for increased efficiency, lower operational cost, and all the other maintenance uh, around upgrades and how they want to patch their service. In and around that, a lot of people have migrated from on-premise to cloud. And as complex as, uh, uh, as simple as it may seem to migrate, there are a bunch of things that one has to take care. Uh, it's not an easy initiative to migrate to the cloud and uh, ensure that the things are going to scale as and when more and more customers start using your service. And apart from that, the other latencies on the network. And there are various aspects that one has to consider uh, when you're hosting this kind of solution on cloud. Uh, nevertheless, I mean, uh, with, the, with the power of the open source engineering team that MySQL has at Oracle, uh, it has been a great success so far where we are able to host the entire MySQL as a service on OCI Cloud, uh, which I'll be talking in more detail in the coming slide. So the intention of this slide is not to showcase a bunch of components that helps in building the OCI service. It is just to uh, show you the roadmap and all the various components that I'll be touching upon in this presentation. I'll be going through each and every individual component that is listed on this particular uh, slide and get into slight detail about uh, each of them and how the entire uh, MySQL as a service is orchestrated on OCI Cloud and how each of these components play a key role in uh, making the service safe, secure, resilient, and uh, highly available for the customers. So the first blue light, blue highlighted uh, uh, component here is the user tendency. So in the most simplistic term, this is uh, what a user would see when he creates a Oracle Cloud account. Uh, the very first, uh, uh, there are a lot of free trial available. I'd really encourage and recommend for you to try out uh, the free account and see the various uh, services that are uh, provided by Oracle Cloud. And uh, uh, the user tenancy is your home tenancy where you could choose a particular home region and go on from there. The uh, next, this slide uh, depicts the uh, console screenshot. It, it shows all the various uh, screens and uh, the wizards that are available on the uh, web console when you create an account and uh, and have a look at uh, you setting up a VM, setting up network, and those are uh, very intuitive, user-friendly wizards that will enable you to do that. The MySQL database service itself leverages on most of these cloud-provided services, the VCM, the storage, and the compute. Uh, and and if you plan to implement your own cloud service on OCI, these things are uh, available at your fingertips to develop your entire uh, service on OCI Cloud. Uh, this screenshot uh, is again a sneak peek of the MySQL as a service on the left-hand side bottom, where you say uh, the wizard popped out where you, as a user, one can create a, a DB system. You can create a standalone DB system or a highly available DB system with multiple nodes. The backup con backups can be configured in a manner that you would want to schedule a backup uh, automatically every day or uh, want to take a manual backup at will. Those things are su uh, supported. Channels enable you to uh, migrate data and have multiple uh, DB systems interconnected using these channels and configuration. MySQL provides a vast set of configuration to tune for performance and various reasons uh, that this configuration enables the end user to do. Uh, moving to next slide, uh, here uh, we, we spoke about regions, the home region when whenever a user tenancy is created. But apart from that, a user can also subscribe to various regions across the globe. Uh, 
uh, so region is basically a localized geographical area such as ashburn sydney mumbai or tokyo where customer creates the tenancy and this region they comprise of availability domain so availability domain can be seen as uh, uh, one or more data center within a particular region you know within a particular city and these uh, ads are for, further uh, further have uh, broken down into uh, a fault domain and the fault domain are basically grouping of hardware uh, for high degree of protection towards unexpected failure or computer uh, hardware maintenance so those kind of things are uh, taken care by fault domain so mds is built on such a robust system where it is spread across various ads and fds to ensure the availability uh, to the end customer moving to the next slide uh, the compartment compartment is is basically it's a logical container you can encapsulate all the oci resources that are used so uh, the storage and uh, the vcn and the compute can be grouped into a particular compartment this additionally enables you to create certain policies and uh, user uh, user accounts and policies as to which resource can be accessed by which user group or a web particular individual uh, this enables you to do that so all the physical resources are encapsulated in this logical compartment so the coming back to the main slide the overall architecture of how mds is uh, kind of orchestrated the key component highlighted here on this slide is the control plane uh, so far we have been discussing about user tenancy and the few aspects uh, around it now we shall move to this uh, most critical part which is the control component all the oci resources that comprise of the mds service itself the components that are required to run the service, the administrative interface, the API service, or any kind of task management, uh, which has got to do with initializing storage, initializing compute uh, to make the DB system and make it available to the end customer is handled by the control plane. Uh, the control plane also takes care of storing the metadata. It has the overall blueprint of the entire system where whatever DB systems are created or backups are created or channels are created, are stored in a very safe, secured metadata store, uh, which is used and accessible at any point of time. Uh, this uh, defaults, defines the overall across for all the customers, their entire information and the blueprint is stored in this store, metadata store. Apart from that, another important aspect that the control plane performs is the health monitoring of uh, the user DB system. Whenever user creates a DB system, all the kind of uh, health checks, whether the application is working fine, the server is up and running, the various entities that support the servers, how is the infrastructure of the Oracle uh, provided cloud is uh, behaving to take the right uh, uh, correct, corrective measures if something is below the threshold that we have set for a particular service. Uh, some of the very important design consideration while uh, coming up with the control plane is definitely the availability. We want to ensure that at no point there is a single point of failure. Uh, the We provide multiple instance uh, MySQL server, highly available server where user can configure more than one node. And you have primary and secondary nodes which uh, kind of switch within sub-seconds and your service is highly available. Uh, scale is another key important factor where as and when more and more people adapt to this particular technology and we have uh, more customers it should not so happen that the other customers are impacted and the bandwidth is compromised so scaling of uh, the service and having the same latency and the throughput uh, is essentially uh, the key key factor for designing the control plane uh, resilience is another important aspect where whenever we do an upgrade or modify a code in the server or the administrator or the control plane code itself uh, we have to ensure that there are no outages. Uh, it is seamless to the user. It just happens behind the background. User does not have to worry. The service is up and running. And resilience is definitely one of the key factor. Security, I think this is uh, the most critical aspect where the user are definitely uh, paranoid about where the data is stored, who can access it, and uh, who can view it, who can read it. So from the security aspect, there is utmost care taken in terms of where this user data is stored. Uh, what is the amount of privileges that is granted to the service? Uh, there are no user data that can be read at any point of time. And we ensure that in control plane, we provide the bare minimum privilege to any kind of an internal service or the instance uh, so that it does 
it has just enough privilege to do what it is meant to do, but not beyond what it is supposed to do. For example, if an internal user has to only read a particular metadata, the we only grant the read-only permission. There is there are several permissions like read, write, manage permissions, but we ensure that at any point of time we carefully examine the operation that has to be performed by a module and give the bare minimum privileges. So in certain sense, a lot of care has been taken to keep this data secure and safe. And apart from that, we also take care of data jurisdiction about a data not leaving a particular region. When when you're doing a cross region migration of data or, uh, or a backups that are stored in another region is only by user user permission and configuration. It is not stored randomly at any region. It is with the approval and uh, the inputs provided by the user. Monitoring is another key aspect. So apart from uh, uh, the things that we can handle reactively if something goes wrong we proactively keep probing the various aspects of the service trying to find the issues even before the server goes down uh, this enables the backend operators and the SMEs to to keep the service up and running even before the issue occurs so for example if there's an in, in infrastructural burden or some brownout at the uh, underneath uh, set of OCI cloud infrastructure services that may impact the MDS we take necessary measures to keep the service up and running in those cases and try to move to a different AD or fault domain and make the service keep keep up and running for the users. The next critical aspect of the overall architecture is the data plane. Uh, so here the entire provisioned, this, this particular data plane will provision the uh, OCI components like compute and the storage, which where exactly the user data is physically residing. It's completely separate from control plane and uh, the design consideration is the instance principle available on this data plane uh, should have minimum blast radius. For example, if one of the data plane nodes are kind of compromised, we ensure that it cannot impact any other data plane or any other customer or any other DB system for that matter, nor can it interfere with the functionality of control plane. So the entire data plane is architected in a manner that the blast radius is bare minimum restricted to the only that particular uh, node on which something may go wrong. It cannot, it doesn't have the ability to bring down the overall service or impact any other customer in any manner. Uh, that's one of the main key de design consideration for the data plane. So there is uh, this particular interaction between control plane and uh, data plane is uh, key for the overall service. So whenever user wants to create a DB system, there is a bunch of interaction between the control plane and data plane, a lot of data and configuration related data and uh, the credentials for that particular server are also shared between the control plane and data plane. This channel is extremely secure. It is encrypted and uh, all the data can only flow in unidirectional where the com control plane uh, provides all the information to the data plane of how and uh, what are the resources that it needs to allocate to bring the, the entire DB system. So this channel is secure and uh, uh, individual for each of those DB systems that are created at any point of time. Uh, the DB itself, we spoke a little bit about the metadata storage. So the entire blueprint is stored in the, uh, in the, um, it's a persistent transactional key valued store where all the information about uh, various configuration that user has set for a DB system and other aspects regarding the networking, the shape of the particular compute, and the storage size, all those details are stored in a very secure manner persistently in a, uh, in a key, key value record. Uh, these things are regularly backed up and uh, uh, it is almost close to the live data for the overall, uh, for the overall infrastructure. So it has a very strict concurrency control, uh, which implies that we ensure the commits are serialized and snapshot isolation is provided and guaranteed. So, Apart from this, there are a lot of things that uh, one may get out of the box uh, from the by adapting the OCI services, uh, the audits and events, uh, the API HTTP request, authentication and authorization, uh, the security zones, the tag validation, quota and limits. So these are some of the out of the box available uh, services from Oracle OCI. Uh, same has been adapted by MDS and uh, any other user who plans to implement something like this on the OCI cloud can definitely leverage on these services. Instead of trying to build it from scratch, uh, you have a head start and a bullet code from where you can start off. 
tenancy is another key aspect uh, the identity and access management policies uh, leverage on this compartment and tenancies whenever you want to dis define a user group or user uh, that can access a particular resource or not access a resource so this is just an example of uh, principle granted to one of the users and not granted to another and what they can access and what they cannot and uh, how these permissions are granted are using policies so these are human readable policies where you can define a set of rules as to which user user group can access what in the particular uh, overall service so another important aspect that the api service provides is uh, apart from only the public facing api where where it enables the user to create and uh, create and monitor the db system we are, have a bunch of internal apis that we have created that enables the operator and other internal users to monitor the health of the particular db system there are various admin related uh, apis that are provided to monitor the dashboard the cpu disk usage which are both publicly available and also available to the internal operators who maintain and keeps the show up and running uh, these internal apis are not exposed to the end customers directly uh, these are primarily to uh, to do the monitoring and auditing of how the system is behaving overall and there are a bunch of metrics and uh, logs that are periodically monitored in order to ensure that uh, the service is healthy and there are no issues at any point of time uh, another important uh, module of the overall control plane is the control plane task itself so there are certain apis which are short lived where you want to get an information about a configuration of a db system where you can fetch it from the database by querying it however there are some long running process where uh, you initiate a db system and there are a bunch of operation that it has to perform behind the scene uh, where it has to allocate uh, memory storage compute network and attach them and then hand over to the customer so these kind of long running tasks are performed by something called worker nodes in the control plane this enables uh, offloading all the particular heavy lifting by another bunch of worker nodes that scale automatically based on the number of requests that are coming in uh, so as and when the user grows uh, the number of worker nodes that support this kind of long running tasks uh, scale automatically and seamlessly so this is a key component of the control plane that ha handles all the uh, important operations behind the scene health check we spoke uh, many num uh, ample number of times in this particular presentation uh, the health checks are not just confined to uh, see whether the node is up and running uh, apart from that we also do the service level the database level checks where we have dummy queries which ensures that uh, the server itself is up and running and responsive not just the not just the process is alive so this kind of probing is done in order to ensure that the health check happens at the deepest level and uh, uh, take necessary action if something is not not as per expectation so in the monitoring there are definitely seven more imp most important uh, user parameter or metric that we monitor regularly uh, the user satisfaction in terms of uh, how the system is behaving is it responsive what is the latencies are the queries getting completed within time as per expectation what is the kind of traffic that is getting pumped into that particular server are there multiple error rates are the queries which are failing for any reason particular reason and how it is scaling i mean when there are multi at, when there are spikes of load how the system is behaving in terms of scaling whether the queries are responded within the uh, well defined latency time and what how loaded is the cpu and the disk usage those things are monitored very very closely uh, to ensure the best customer experience for the database so apart from the functionality itself a lot of care has been taken in order to make this particular service up and running for the customer uh, and provide the best performance available it is backed by the mysql engineering team itself and any kind of tweaks in terms of ios and uh, uh, things like uh, flush table read log how to eliminate those usage on cloud and how it can uh, double write buffers can be optimized so those kind of things are in fact uh, fine tuned and optimized to the core by the engineering team to work at the best possible manner on cloud uh, emails and notifications are mechanism where uh, where uh, where uh, the the operators get notified if some things are not working fine based on the health check input uh, the various logs and the metrics and alarms have been configured in a manner that if something fails we are immediately notified and 
do they take the necessary action to bring it live and auditing of the logs happen on a very frequent basis uh, we see that whatever we have defined as the thresholds are met time and again on a daily and hourly so backup and restore the one of the key factor where user can define how frequently they want to take backup and uh, they can also choose an option of migrating these particular uh, uh, backups to another region completely uh, based on the data jurisdiction that is defined by the user so that uh, even if there is a regional level failure uh, the end customers can can bring it live again in another region and continue from there so backup and restore is another key aspect of the overall uh, setup so all in all in short uh, this is how the entire mds is implemented uh, trying to make it safe secure available well monitored and managed and powered by the engineering team of mysql and uh, yeah that's it that's all i had any queries please let me know